Mazel Tov! Brooke and Zach just got married and Bubby has a special surprise in the kitchen. Take it away, Bubby. simply roast chicken. You know chicken is a very healthy meat compared to red meat today and there are so many recipes with chicken, hundreds, different styles and different ways but for the Jewish family it is exceptionally means meaningful specifically on Friday night the beginning of the Sabbath is roast chicken and so now I'm going to show you how my mother made it I made it and how I taught my children to make it. And let's begin. The hardest part in making roast chicken is the preparation. But like anything else, the more you do it, the less time it'll be consuming and you schedule it. I like to do it like on a Thursday night I will prepare my chicken so that Friday all I have to do is put it in the oven. And you know, one well, I was listening to a speaker one day and he said you have to start on Wednesday to prepare for Friday Sabbath. And so I will show you how I prepare my chicken. The first thing I'm going to do is wash the chicken thoroughly in cold water. Inside and out. And then what I'd like to do is to put scalding hot water over the chicken and, and check for pin feathers. Or also, check the cavity put, and make sure that there are no giblets in the cavity, that it's all clean. And also, look, take a look if there is extra fat inside. Over here, just take a knife and cut some of it off. And now I'm going to pour my boiling hot water over it. And this is the way my mother did it and I did it. And you know, you, like they say, you have to watch how you handle chicken. And so this is what I feel is very important. And I boil my hot water, pour it over the whole chicken. Of course, the, the water is hot, so you can't put your hand in it. So I mix dilute it a little bit with cold water so I can handle it. Pour some of the water off. And now I can start working with the chicken. First thing I like to do is check for pin feathers. And also by putting hot, boiling, scalding water, if in case there are any extra pin feathers, they can easily be removed, specifically near the, uh, the drumsticks or in between here. Just see, they, they come right out. Very simple. Because the chickens are processed, sometimes they're beautiful and they're clean. This happens to be a nice clean one, and sometimes it isn't. You don't need those extra pin feathers. Ooh, turn it over, double check. Oh, now you see, this, that, look at this one. On this drumstick, there's quite a few ones. See how fast it comes out? That's why I like to prepare it ahead of time. You plan your week around the time when you have a chicken. If it's frozen, put it in your refrigerator so it has good 24 hours to thaw out. All right, now the next step. Now double check to make sure the pin feathers and everything is clean and it's ready to be put in the roasting pan. You need a small roasting pan. This chicken is about three to four pounds and it'll serve three to four people. Place it in the roasting pan and now make sure you wash your hands with soap before you start anything else because you're done with the cleaning procedure. And now that I've prepared my chicken and cleaned it, I'm going to take it in my roasting pan over to the table and prepare it with, for the spices and for baking. My spices are very simple and I don't even measure. 
There's garlic powder, onion powder, a little paprika to give it color, and a little rosemary. And these are called allspice, whole allspice. And they come in the little, where the spice rack is, a little a bottle like this. And I like the flavor of it with a little, and a pinch of rosemary, which makes it very tasty. And this is what I do with the little allspice balls. I take it and try to just push them in between the skin if it's possible, where the thigh is on one side. And if it falls out, well, if it falls out, it'll still stay with the chicken. And the other side. And this way, under the skin, it adds to the flavor. And also through the top, that's three. And then one I throw in the cavity. And then another thing. I like it to taste good and I like my white meat to be juicy and flavorful. So I'm not so fussy that the top of the chicken has to be so perfectly brown. So here's what I do. I put my garlic powder a little bit and my onion powder, well that was, that was onion powder. And this is the garlic powder a little bit. Don't measure. It'll taste good no matter what. A little paprika and then turn it over. Literally turn it so that the breast of the chicken faces down. Reason being that all the juices are going to go into the breast and make it taste good. And it'll give you the best flavor and it'll brown a little, not too much, like they show you in the, in the uh, pictures, but it'll be there. And now we'll finish it off with paprika on the back side a little. And I put it into a 350 degree oven for about an hour and a half. You have to allow about 20 minutes per pound of chicken. And, th and then it should be ready. Oh, and by the way, put it in a preheated 350 degree oven. And now it's time for the Yiddish word of the day. Bubby, what's today's Yiddish word? And today's Yiddish, Yiddish word is bashet. And so you want to know what does it mean? It's meant to be. It's meant to be? Well, for example, a fellow and a girl are going around together and they decide to get married. It was bashet that they meet each other and get together and decide to get married. Bashet. It's meant to be. Fits perfectly with our episode today. It sure does. Anyway, one thing that really is meant to be is when we work together with Project Read On. I don't know if you've seen that online, Bubby. Have you seen the uh, Project yeah, Read On? Sure. It provides closed captions for those that need closed Little captions. Help. And sure. this is something that's been really great for us. So we thank Project Read On for working with us, working together, and we definitely want to encourage if anybody has any videos that they want to provide to the closed caption community, hiring Project Read On is really great because they do an amazing job of getting all of your words, Bubby, even your Yiddish words. Right, <laughs> and it means so much to the people that need it. So you can check out Project Read On by going to the website right below here. We'll be right back. I'm Bubby from FeedMeBubby.com, a video cooking show, kosher cooking show. And I received many emails from all over the world. This email touched me deeply. She wanted to know about Friday night and lighting candles. And I thought the best thing to do would be to refer her to FridayLight.org. I began to focus on Erev Shabbos, the smells and the taste and the memories of preparing for Shabbos. You know, we all live such busy lives these days, but we all look forward to the Friday evening. Everything is at a standstill, and we start preparing for Shabbos. Please join me and all other women around the world lighting candles on Friday evening. And if you need more information, type in FridayLight.org for all the information plus in a free Friday night starter kit, including free candles. A good Shabbos to all. I've taken the chicken out of my oven, and like I say, an hour and a half, each oven is a little different, so you'll have to judge 
how your oven works and get, let it rest for 15 minutes so that the juices will flow back into the chicken. And if it's difficult, you can do it with your hands, but if it's difficult, two tablespoons like this. Get it from either end of the cavity, lift it carefully, and then because it's a small chicken, and easily flip it over. Now you see this side isn't as brown as the other, but the beauty of this is this, that you'll get the taste. And now I'm gonna show you how I plate it. And you try and cut it where the joints are. So also to make sure it's done, you put a little uh, knife in through it to make sure that the juices run clear. All right, this is the drumstick. and the other quarter of the meat, and then the white meat, which I like to slice. And see how juicy and, and how it looks, how nice it comes off. It makes it for wonderful, beautiful serving. I spill that out. I don't bother with gravy. The chicken is rich enough and tasty enough. And if you're like one of my son-in-laws, barbecue sauce goes on everything. So it is a matter of choice or condiments. And this is my Shabbos Friday evening meal. Oh, and one final thing I have to tell you about. You see this beautiful chalet? My granddaughter surprised me. She was the first year in college, a freshman, and she came home and brought this to me. She said, Bobby, I baked this challah myself. And I said, well, where did you learn? This is, a, what is it, a beautiful challah. So she told me she happened to be in the dorm and there were some girls baking challah. And she went and she joined them and she learned. I'll tell you something, she's better than her Bobby because I gave up baking challah a long time ago. It's, it's too much time absorbing and you could, the, we have bakeries nearby and you can buy the frozen challah and bake it in the house. And uh, I thought, uh, concentrated on the main entrees I thought would be more important than the challah. But I'm so proud of her that she knows how to do it. And what even is more better and much more exciting is the mitzvah of the challah. The girls baked the challah and sold it. And their organization was challahforhunger.org. What a wonderful charitable thing to do. And imagine a freshman standing off to college, just starting, and she comes and bakes a beautiful challah for her bubby. Oh, how I a proud bubby. I hope you share my simple roast chicken recipe with your loved ones. Est gesundheit. Enjoy. Bobby and Aram. Uh, this is Bruce from Long Island. I just wanted to, just wanted to let you know, and I appreciate uh, all the videos you put out. Thank you very much. This podcast is part of the Blueberry Network, where listeners and podcasters come together. Blueberry.com.